dodge this. Hey, ladies and gentlemen, Popeye from Down the Rabbit Hole, federaljack.com, and popeyeradio.com here. Just wanted to put this video together really quick with the thought in mind of what would Matt Simmons say about the massive L.A. methane leak? Now, for those of you who don't know who Matt Simmons was, he died in August of 2010, August 8th. 2010 to be exact he was a 67 year old investment banker to the oil industry and the author of Twilight in the Desert it's a book about peak oil interesting read to say the least anyway he died under a sudden kind of we'll say interesting circumstances he had a heart attack in his hot tub although it was supposedly a stormy night Uh, massive thunderstorms that night so I don't know if he would have been in his hot tub but I digress supposedly he was found in his hot tub dead of a heart attack after voicing opinion in dissent of what BP was doing in regard to the BP oil spill And he was a very vocal proponent that they were lying. He kept saying that BP was full of it. And he died under very mysterious circumstances. But the reason I bring him up for this video is because Matt was an oil industry insider and he knew his stuff. Hence why the mainstream ran to him during the BP oil spill. So, with the ongoing LA methane leak, I thought to myself, hmm, what would Matt Simmons say? So I went back, and I dug out one of his last interviews that he did, and I cut out the part that he was talking about the methane that was leaking out of the BP oil spill, because the Macondo well wasn't just leaking oil, there was also uh, methane coming out too. So, I wanted to highlight his thoughts on the dangers of a massive methane leak, like what was coming out of the BP oil spill and what's coming out of the LA methane leak now, which has been referred to as a the BP oil spill on land. So there's that. Anyway, first I'm going to go to two quick mainstream clips about the severity of the LA methane leak, just in case people aren't familiar with it. And then I'm going to go to Matt Simmons and his thoughts on it. And while you hear the audio of that, you're going to see the FLIR, the infrared video of the methane leak rolling down the hill and through the neighborhood and around the houses. And listen to what Matt is saying. And if you're out there, if you can get out, get out. At the very least, get a gas mask and you'll hear Matt say the same thing. And that was his advice to the people on the Gulf Coast. And there's a lot of people that are sick because of it. And so we're clear the affected area out in L.A. isn't just Porter Ranch. You have to be careful if you live anywhere near the San Fernando Valley. You know, Northridge, Burbank, Sherman Oaks. Even down into downtown L.A., I would be worried in all the communities around there. Every single one of them. I'd be paying attention to this because this affects not only Porter Ranch, but it also affects your air quality and your possible life if this thing explodes and the health effects of the methane leaking out and you breathing all of that in and it polluting the air all around you. So keep that in mind. Let's go to the mainstream news reports and then let's listen to what Matt had to say. You say this is the biggest environmental disaster since the BP oil spill. Uh, why do you say that? Because it is BP, uh, just on, it's the BP oil spill just on land. And um, this is a situation where it's very deep. Uh, there was a valve in place that would prevent this type of disaster that Southern Cal Gas removed and never replaced. And now we face this disaster in real time. And all this gas is just billowing out, if you will, just like it did in BP. Mm -hmm. And the magnitude of it is significant. The depth, 
The length of time that these people in the community have been assaulted, which is ongoing now for months, the amount of time it's going to take for them to shut this off. And just in three months, we've had 150 million pounds of methane spewing into the environment. And if this goes on four more months, five more months, you could double or triple that number. So in a statement to CNN, SoCal Gas does say this, quote, we're working hard to both stop the leak and to address their concerns. We are providing relocation services for residents who wish to remove themselves from the leak's odor and have established a claims process for those who feel they may have suffered harm or injury. Beyond that, we are not going to comment on the legal action and will respond to the lawsuit through the judicial process. This is an ongoing assault. They knew it was happening. There was oversight failures. You think they knew failures. about it before October 2015? We definitely know that they knew the well was bad. We definitely know that they knew back in 1979 that that safety valve that they removed should have been replaced. And yes, there's indication that they knew about this leak prior to October 23rd. That's just when they reported. Uh, last week, we showed you this infrared time-lapse image of the natural gas leak in Porter Ranch, California. Uh, with this, we can see what people there have been smelling and getting sick from for nearly two months now. This huge, out-of-control natural gas leak that they just cannot get under control. Big, rolling clouds of methane gas. This thing has been leaking for weeks now. And the gas company says they're still nowhere near figuring out how to stop the leak. They're still estimating that this leak could keep going on for four more months before they figure out how to stop it. And the scale of this thing near Porter Ranch, California, uh, in Southern California, the scale of this thing is nuts. State air quality regulators estimate the leak is releasing so much methane per hour that this one leak basically accounts for 25% of all the daily greenhouse gas emissions in the entire state of California. So we have these infrared images of the leak, right? Natural gas, you can't see it, right? So you can't see it without some sort of imaging technology that lets you see it in the atmosphere. These infrared images help us see it. Uh, we also have the state's own numbers about the leak. But today, we got a new indicator about the scale of this ongoing billowing problem in Southern California, because today the Federal Aviation Administration has now banned planes from flying near this thing. This leak is now a no-go zone, not just for the neighbors on the ground, but for planes in the sky. A spokesman for California's Office of Emergency Services says the flight, flight ban at the site of the leak is partly for protection of gas company workers on the ground. They don't want them distracted by low-flying planes. But they also told us today that pilots may be at risk of getting sick from the fumes as they fly through the giant plumes of gas. So. Pilots are not gonna be allowed to fly closer than 2,000 feet. And that restriction lasts from now until March. We reached out to the FAA tonight about this flight ban. They told us that they have received at least one request so far to be an exception to the no-fly order. They've had at least one request to basically violate the no-fly order. And that request came from NASA. NASA apparently wants to fly some kind of monitoring drone through the area where there has been this huge leak. No word yet from NASA on what exactly this drone's mission would be at the site of the leak, but I for one cannot wait to see what our nation's best astrophysicists will find if they get to look inside this giant, hugely polluting, apparently endless gas disaster in Southern California that's due to carry on for months yet. And what really worries me the most is that that stuff is so poisonous that we should be passing out gas masks like crazy. I'm told that all the, ocean, all the ocean, oceanographic people on these research vessels are now wearing gas masks. We've heard reports of methane gas levels at one million times normal. Yeah, I mean, more. I think the New York Times reported a few days ago that there's been more methane released from this than the history of the world. And that stuff in your lungs is worse than the mustard gas. Oh, so if you think Saddam Hussein, you know, did a bunch of people, this is the Saddam Hussein, you know, squared. Is there a danger of a massive methane gas eruption? Look, yeah, I mean, if the, hur if the hurricane brings this stuff to shore, you know, I mean, I, 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 I keep saying that we really basically should be 
at least have in, have in place an evacuation plan to to evacuate all the citizens of the Gulf Coast. So, so you, you're not even talking about um, the seafloor erupting with a methane gas. Oh, no, no, I'm talking about, talking about the, that's already there. The methane that's already released, you're saying that, that, that this is so deadly that if it's brought in by a hurricane... If, 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 the, if, the, to, if the four to 500 feet lake, you know, gets tossed up to the surface, then, then it, it could be the greatest, you know, nightmare we've ever seen. Worse than any war we've ever had. What's the danger of of a massive methane gas explosion from from the seafloor? I don't. I don't. I actually think the explosion would be good news. I think the problem is that we is the is people breathing it into their lungs and dying. Mm-hmm. But being asphyxiated, the, the, yeah, the methane yeah. replacing the oxygen. Yeah. Yeah. Which, um, when I, I was doing some research, and I, you know, I came across the story out of Cameroon, Africa, 1986, the lake, yeah. uh, the methane gas bubble came up yeah. and killed 1,800 people instantly. Yeah. If you lived along the Gulf, what would you be doing right now? Either evacuating or getting a gas mask. Wow, those are two wonderful options. Yeah, very sad. There you have it from the late Matt Simmons himself, ladies and gentlemen. And although he was speaking of the BP oil spill at the time, as you heard, the L.A. methane leak can be considered the BP oil spill on land. So I thought, since Matt was talking about methane from the BP oil spill, it's only appropriate to play his warning for the people that live out in L.A., and that are affected by this huge, massive methane leak out there. To leave you on a positive note, I'm going to end the video with the end speech from the movie On Deadly Ground with Steven Seagal from the 90s. And although it's a fictional story, the end speech is extremely powerful and it applies to our real world situation today with not just the LA methane lake either but the BP oil spill the ongoing meltdowns at Fukushima and all the other nuke dump sites including Westlake just pay attention to the the words spoken very very powerful as I always tell you ladies and gentlemen the solutions to our problems are most definitely an inside job. After watching this video, I hope you are inspired to be the change. I'd like to start out by saying thank you to all the brothers and sisters that have come here today representing this cause. I've been asked by Mr. Etok and the Tribal Council to speak to you and the members of the press about the injustice that's been brought against us by some government officials and big business. How many of you out there have heard of alternative engines? Engines that can run on anything from alcohol to garbage or water. Or carburetors that can get hundreds of miles to the gallon. Or electric or magnetic engines that can practically run forever. You don't know about them because if they were to come into use, they put the oil companies out of business. The concept of the internal combustion engine has been obsolete for over 50 years. But because of the oil cartels and corrupt government regulation, we and the rest of the world have been forced to use gasoline for over a hundred years. Big business is primarily responsible for destroying the water we drink, the air we breathe, and the food we eat. They have no care for the world they destroy, only for the money they make in the process. How many oil spills can we endure? Millions and millions of gallons of oil are now destroying the ocean and the many forms of life it supports. Among these is plankton which supplies 60 to 90% of the Earth's oxygen. It supports the entire marine ecosystem, which forms the basis of our planet's food supply. But the plankton is dying. I thought, well, let's go to some remote state or country, anywhere on Earth. But in doing a little research, I realized that these people broker toxic waste all over the world. They basically control the legislation, and in fact, they control the law. The law says, no company can be fined over $25,000 a day. If a company is making $10 million a day by dumping lethal toxic waste into the ocean, it's only good business to continue doing this. They influence the media so that they can control our minds. 
They've made it a crime to speak out for ourselves, and if we do so, we're called conspiracy nuts and we're laughed at. We're angry because we're all being chemically and genetically damaged, and we don't even realize it. Unfortunately, this will affect our children. We go to work each day, and right under our noses, we see our car and the car in front of us spewing noxious and poisonous gases that are all accumulative poisons. These poisons kill us slowly, even when we see no effect. How many of us would have believed if we were told 20 years ago that on a certain day we wouldn't be able to see 50 feet in front of us? That we wouldn't be able to take a deep breath because the air would be a mass of poisonous gas? That we wouldn't be able to drink out of our faucets, that we'd have to buy water out of bottles? The most common and God-given rights have been taken away from us. Unfortunately, the reality of our lives is so grim nobody wants to hear it. Now I've been asked what we can do. I think we need a responsible body of people that can actually represent us rather than big business. This body of people must not allow the introduction of anything into our environment that is not absolutely biodegradable or able to be chemically neutralized upon production. And finally, as long as there's profit to be made from the polluting of our Earth, companies and individuals will continue to do what they want. We have to force these companies to operate safely and responsibly and with all our best interests in mind so that when they don't, we can take back our resources and our hearts and our minds and do what's right. The Apostle of the Great Spirit, I ask you to bless all the people here at our grandmas, our grandpas, and the little ones. We have a four directions, and I want to bless the future generation and the Indian nation, our people, they be strong again. The earth is our grandma.